According to the student attendance policy, faculty members are required to provide students with institutional and classroom attendance requirements, as well as certify attendance of students in their courses two times per semester. Objectives After completing this module, you will be able to identify college policy on student attendance, locate connections between attendance certification, federal policies, and financial aid, and finally identify the steps required to submit an attendance certification. According to Policy 1-03, Student Attendance, faculty members are expected to participate in attendance-related activities for each course. First, an instructor must provide students with the institutional and classroom attendance requirements. This information must be added to the course syllabus and reviewed with students on the first day of class. It is advised that instructors maintain a daily attendance record to ensure accuracy. Your department may have a tool that will assist you in maintaining daily attendance records. These records must be submitted at the end of the semester. In addition to communicating and maintaining attendance records, instructors must certify attendance on two occasions throughout the semester. For any institution of higher education that receives Title IV federal funding for financial aid, attendance certification is a crucial part of the reporting process. Attendance certification helps to prevent financial aid fraud and maintains policies of compliance within established federal guidelines. Faculty are an integral part of this attendance certification process and are responsible for identifying individuals who have registered for classes but have never attended any class meetings or engaged with class activities online. Accurate and timely submission of the never attended form helps the institution to make appropriate disbursements of financial aid dollars. Similarly, students who unofficially withdraw by ceasing to attend or to engage online before 60% of the course has been completed also need to be identified for reporting purposes. Failure to comply with federal financial aid policies can cost institutions millions of dollars, loss of certain accreditations, and serious loss of students. As faculty, you are expected to maintain accurate attendance records and to meet the reporting dates for each attendance certification period. You should also make note of the varying dates within a semester for courses that run 16 weeks, 10 weeks, 8 weeks, and so forth. Reminders are distributed with reassuring frequency by the Admissions and Records Office via college email. Please be attentive to the emails and to make note of reporting dates on your personal calendar. As you begin to plan for the semester, it is important that you become aware of the key dates that are connected to student attendance. Census date. This is the last day to drop a class with a refund. You are required to submit an attendance certification that corresponds with this date. Last day to withdraw. After the period in which a student can receive a refund, there is still time to decide if withdrawing is the correct action for the student. In this case, a student may initiate the withdrawal process. Unofficial withdrawal. Should a student discontinue attending or participating in class for two to three consecutive weeks, an instructor has the right to remove the student from the course. This is connected to the second attendance certification. A student's last date of attendance will be required for the second certification, which is the stopped attending certification. As the new semester begins, be sure to make note of all the reporting dates for your various classes. If you are teaching two or more classes that have different start and or end dates, you will have different reporting dates throughout the semester. To locate attendance certification due dates, visit the Inside Reynolds homepage at inside.reynolds.edu, then locate the link for attendance certification. Due dates for the current semester's reporting are posted here. Be sure to submit your attendance certification reports on the date that they are due. 
To complete your reporting, you may also need to open the Student Information System and locate your class roster. This roster contains your course name and section, your course identification number, and the student ID information for all of your students. Additionally, if you track student attendance through Blackboard, or if your course is being taught online, you will also need to have your Blackboard course site open as well. Otherwise, be sure that you have your attendance records nearby so that you can complete the reporting accurately. When you are prepared with your documentation and course identifiers, click on the appropriate form link. Whether it is never attended students at the start of the semester or the unofficial withdrawn students after mid-semester. In order to complete your certification, you will need your five-digit course ID number. Select Never Attended Students by clicking the radio button aligned with the student name. When confirmation appears, be sure to print out the form so that you maintain documentation of your submission. If you are reporting students for lack of compliance with the attendance policies, on the unofficially withdrawn students form, you will also need to include the last date of attendance. Once you have verified all of the information for accuracy, simply submit the form and again print out the confirmation for your records. If you need assistance with any of these procedures, contact your program head or school division. You may also consult the Admissions and Records Office as well if you need further guidance. Congratulations! You have completed the Attendance Certification Module. Please return to Blackboard and complete the quiz.